everyone, welcome to my mansion and we have the warmest greeting just for you. This paradise island is more than just white sands and Tuscan blue waters. Come see the beauty only on Sydney Music. <laughs> Say hello to the island paradise hailed as the UNESCO Global Geopark. Previously, we've toured the geosites and seaside treasures of Blitung Island. But what's a geopark without its interconnecting cultural heritage? So today, we'll delve right into that. Welcome to the Island of Dreamers. Now here, we're gonna look at Belitung's thick Melayu background and we're best to see that than in a traditional house. And it seems like they already have a welcoming party for us. Let's check it out. We were greeted by the joyful Sakapur Siri dance. This native Belitung dance would often be performed as an honorary welcome. They are accompanied by a traditional gambus orchestra, giving off an upbeat and festive vibe. You will also find this dance in Jambi, South Sumatra, as they have the same Melayu background. One notable gesture is when the dancers throw flowers at the audience as a symbol of averting bad luck. And with that blessing, we welcome you to the traditional Blitung home. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. I feel like a king already. It's called Rumah Panggung, which literally translates to house on stilts. It features unique ways to overcome the local topography. Now this type of traditional house would be considered a mansion because it's huge. And they would sit elevated right here, not because of ferocious animals, because Belitung ain't got none. It's got to do with the weather. Oh, watch out. Being elevated means the air can circulate on top and on the bottom, making it cool. And you can feel that because as soon as you enter this, it's an instant breeze. And being this high up, it's easier to show my social status. Pretty cool, huh? It utilizes wood and a high roof to combat heat, while an array of windows brighten its halls. This particular rumah panggung is located right next to the region's office in Tanjung Pandan. Built in 2004, it's actually a replica. That now serves as a prominent tourism spot. You'll see similar designs along the coast of Sumatra and Malaysia. No surprise there since they all have the same Malay roots. Like anywhere in Indonesia, every custom has meaning. I haven't told you what I'm wearing. This is called Teluk Belanga, or known here as the Kancing Lima, the five buttons. First one is Tauhid, the unity of God. Second is Allah. Third and fourth are the prophets of Muhammad and Adam. And the fifth one is the five pillars of Islam. Very philosophical and breezy. Whoa. Whoa. If you think this is festive, you gotta see what the bride is wearing right here. That is so beautiful. Well, this is a traditional Belitung wedding set and you can see all the decorations here. Oh. A Belitung wedding is a sacred ceremony. One of its main features are the boxes you see right here. They are wedding gifts from the groom to the bride. Gotta impress the bride. <laughs> and a romantic bed right there. It'll be more romantic with some traditional music. Here we are. <laughs> the 
melody is played on a gambus. The beat is set by a drum called gendang hadro with a lively touch of the accordion. That romantic star of the day is surely a great mood booster. When I think of Belitung, this is one of the first pictures that comes to mind. <laughs> if you haven't taken the hint, I'm talking about a classic scene from the story of Laskar Pelangi or the Rainbow Troops, written by Belitung's own Andrea Hirata. Let's see inside. Oh, wow! Look at this. That's amazing. SD Muhammadiyah Gantong. Oh, I really didn't expect to feel this humble, this inspired to be sitting here. Just thinking of a fictional story, but you know, imagine going to school with sandy floor and there's holes everywhere in the roof. Makes you want to appreciate, then don't take for granted what you have for education. This 2005 book was adapted into a hit movie in 2008, which is still one of the top five most watched movies in Indonesia. That scene right there. Zebu! <laughs> you can't avoid it. Whether it's the PA on the plane, your local guide, or anyone you meet on the island, they will mention the Rainbow Troops. And it's for good reason, because it paints a realistic picture of the island's past. <laughs> I remember this scene. Wow. <laughs> I'm still so happy to be here. <laughs> Now, the setting of the fictional Rainbow Troops was 1970s Belitung, where the whole island practically became the capital of tin mining. And you can still see evidence of that throughout the island. Let's have a look at that. Evidence of that is scattered around the island's interior and throughout the coast, even right outside Belitung's regional capital of Tanjung Pandan. Whoa, that moon surface like mountain of white sands all came from right here. You're looking at a body of water that fills up the scars of Belitung, the open pit mining site. They call this the Blue Lake. Although it doesn't look quite blue, does it? Maybe because it's cloudy. Belitung was once known as a company island, since during the colonial Dutch times, the whole island was exploited by a single private enterprise called the Billiton Maskapai. In fact, that's how the name Belitung came about. It's derived from the local dialect for Billiton. Look at how the erosion is just cut away the soil right there. It's like being in a Star Wars set or interstellar for that case. Wow. Tin was first extracted here in the 1850s. At its peak, 20 to 30% of the world's tin supply came from this tiny island. After independence, the company was nationalized and continued to operate. Today, private enterprises still eye its tin deposits. But aside from that, the island is also home to kaolin veins. Take for example this active kaolin mine. Not sure if I should be excited to see a landscape like this because for some, this is an ecological nightmare. Although this is a heritage that you can't cover, this is Blitung. Ironically, all that mining brought about another unlikely heritage of Blitung. 
See this? This is a space rock. It's a Belitung heritage. Its real name is even cooler. Meteorite Tektites. Oh, kalau yang saya jual ini batunya batu meteor namanya batu satam. Meet Udin, a man with more than 10 years of experience in trading satam rocks. Hanya ada batu satamnya di Pulau Belitung. Satam rock is a favorite souvenir that would often be turned into rings, necklaces, or even prayer beads. So much so that officials built a Satam rock monument right smack in the middle of the capital. Oh, that looks cool. Let's see if it fits. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Perfect fit. I don't know what my wife will think when I come home with a black ring like that. <laughs> But it looks really cool. <laughs> so, what's all the fuss about? Ini original. Warnanya mengkilat, ukirnya ada. Biasanya kalau rezeki kita ada, dia ada tulisannya lapas Allah. Yep, their prize for their one of a kind carvings. And we weren't kidding about them being a space rock. They came from a meteorite that crashed 700,000 years ago and became embedded around tin deposits. Penambang timah, walaupun dia mencari timah itu, tapi pikirnya ke satam itulah. Satam inilah yang dicari, kan? That's because even a small piece of satam rock can go for 150,000 rupiah or around 10 US dollars, while a big uncut piece can go for up to 3 million rupiah or around 150 US dollars. Mr. Udin here stands by his phone 24-7, waiting for any new catch from every corner of the island. After a closer inspection, I started to believe its powers. Oh, I can't get over it. This is how you know it's a satam. When you put it aside like this, there's that magnetic field. Oh, you can feel it. <laughs> and it gets more magnified when it's bigger. Oh yeah, you can feel it. The magnetic field just repelling each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks so cool. They kind of look like dates when you put it in a container like that. Eat it. So there's satam rocks. It's impossible to put a standardized price for satam rocks. Like they do on gold or diamonds. It just needs the right buyer with a personal taste to a piece of rock. Tapi orang sampai bisa ngejar banget yang itu tuh. Itu gimana bisa dapat koneksinya itu? Iya, karena Satu batu ini nggak ada duanya kalau yang kayak gini ya gini lah gitu. Nah, jadi wah yang itu saya suka yang itu diambil. Dia nggak mau ditawarin yang lain gitu kan? Well, I guess I didn't quite find that connection. At least not yet. Maybe next time. <laughs> And finally, after touring the island, we introduce you to the economic heart of Belitung. It's the Tanjung Pandan City. Just over 100,000 people call this city home. And it's mostly comprised of those with Malay and Chinese heritage. All that tin from the island would have passed through right here. The mining industry not only brought foreign culture into the country, it also made lasting changes to the local lifestyle. Ha, ah, cozy afternoon like this, what's the most belittle thing to do? Hmm, tag along. I see it right there. They say you haven't been to Belitung if you haven't sat down in one of their coffee shops. Oh, come have a look. <laughs> see, there's nothing fancy or special about the place. It's, it's a gathering communal place where people come and just spend time. <laughs> That's the taste of the local right there. This one is Kopi Kongji, one of the oldest coffee shops in town. They've been brewing coffee for the local community since 1943. The family that runs it first opened a coffee shop simply because they had no other choice. Orang tua jual kopi itu karena miskin. Kalau misalnya uangnya banyak waktu itu, mungkin nggak jualan kopi, tapi jualan 
toko kelontong jual pakaian, jual toko bangunan ya. That's Isak Holidi, aka Akiang Kongji. He is a second generation member of the Kongji family in charge of running the coffee shop. He believes that coffee drinking has become a culture. Yeah. Jadi di sini jadi ruang publik, semua ada. Penjahat ada, pejabat ada. Ini banyak banyak, hampir semua ada. A blend of robusta and arabica brewed in boiling water is what brings the whole community together. Yang saya pelajarin, orang tua kita bilang kalau you sedu kopi itu harus air yang itu mendidih betul. Kemudian waktu belajar di barista saya dapat pelajaran itu bahwa 60 sampai 80 derajat bisa bisa untuk sedu kopi dan itu agak bertentangan dengan keyakinan saya yang selama ini iya. And so Kongji Coffee sticks to their original recipe. <laughs> This is where it happens. That is 100 degrees boiling water. No thermometer. Just keep it boiling and then you brew it right here. And hmm, that smell and that ooh, that heat because this is charcoal. It's gonna taste so good. They have a simple menu: hot and iced coffee with condensed milk and snacks like fritters. So it's my turn to have a taste. An original milk coffee for me. Oh, ini mah ya. Ini kopi. Kopi susu. Kopi susu mas. Okay, Thank you, ma. Look at that. Woo! A fine mix of arabica and robusta coffee. Look at that. And what makes it really good? You may not agree with me. This, it's the sweet condensed milk on the bottom. Now you have to stir this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, still pretty hot. All right, let's do a, a local way of drinking hot coffee. Yeah. Well, whoops. Put it there. Make it a bit cooler quickly. That's good coffee. Cheers, guys. So good. Oh, it's good. A glass of hot coffee only costs about 10,000 rupiah or 70 US cents. Now, I'm not a coffee expert, but that was a fine taste. We were just about to wrap up our tour of Belitung. But we have one last stop for the folks back home. Just before we go home, we're gonna get some Belitung specials first. And we have with Ma Yuli, who is making us the specials. Selamat pagi, Bu. Sore. <laughs> Ini adalah makanan khas Belitung, oleh-oleh khas Belitung, yaitu ketam isi. Wow. Iya, ketam isi. Iya, kepiting. It's genius! For those of you who fancy a crab meat, but couldn't be bothered with all the shells, This is it! Yuli here is one of the first people to bring this dish to the market almost 20 years ago. Buang begitu aja. Sekarang kan udah jadi ini, udah jadi pencarian. Satu biji ini 700 rupiah loh. Alright, here's how it's made. Meat is picked from the crabs, boiled, then seasoned. The shells are then used as garnish. Right, so this is a batch for us to bring home, and I want to try to make it. Bu, boleh coba ya? Boleh, boleh, boleh. <laughs> Ambil. Oke. Okay. Ini cangkangnya, that's the shell. Terus di, uh, ini adonannya. So the fillings are already done. All right, that's it. <laughs> How does it look? Yeah, good, good. Of course, it looks good. And then it's straight to deep frying. Ha, it's done. There it is. Look at that color. Yum. And it smells so good. Let's give it a shot. Oh, still really hot. <laughs> right, first bite. Oh. Wow. 
savory. Mm, hot. <laughs> it's so tasty. Forget spring rolls. I like my crab rolls. And a food. Smoky. Mmm, yum. Ooh. The shell is so soft. It's like a crab cracker. It's got a taste of its own. This is so unique, guys. Mmm. <laughs> I saw Mayuli subtly smirking from the corner of my eye. It turns out locals don't eat the shells, although they are edible. Ah. <laughs> But I enjoyed it nevertheless. A piece of katamisi costs 10,000 rupiah or about 70 US cents. They'll pack it up fried and frozen, ready to bring home. Cheers, guys. Mm. Splendid. And with that crab shell, it's time to end our tour on the island I totally fell for. See you guys on our next trip!